We know why we are here today. We remember that day. And we also remember the heroism as a community, as a family, and as a country. In that sliver of time, our world was changed forever. then like to invite all of you to come into the museum and be part of our tribute to the fallen who will always be remembered, the heroes for whom we give thanks, and the workers who we have created for the ages a haven of hope and remembrance. We invite you to experience, remember, and rebuild. What makes a museum a unique learning environment, as opposed to a library or a school, going to a lecture or watching a documentary, museums have the things. When you go into the art museum, you're looking at the actual photographs of the event. And in particular, the reason that I got into the museum field is to work with the artifacts. I think that the exhibition is gonna do a couple of things. Certainly it is gonna bring back all of our memories which was obviously traumatic for all of us. But it's also going to tell a story about what we do about things like that. How we remember, why we remember, why we pay tribute as a culture. That was one of our goals with this exhibition, is to try to highlight how as a culture we pay honor and tribute to people who sacrifice themselves for the greater good. I know I was emotionally impacted the first time I walked in. I don't know how it's it's really not possible to walk in there and not be emotionally impacted from what you see. Walking through this exhibit here, seeing the people's ID cards that they have found and stuff like that, you put a face with a name, that personalizes it for you. I almost broke into tears when I was standing in front of the case that held that fireman's helmet, and it's all crushed. And that was an actual thing worn by an actual person on that actual day. Obviously, there were people from Michigan and people born in Michigan, raised in Michigan, went to school in Michigan who were part of the victim population, but there was no direct connection. And I think that was the wonderful moment when the light bulb went off, which is 9-11 happened to all of us. We realized perhaps for the first time in many of our lifetimes of how vulnerable we are. One of the first things you see when you walk in the exhibit is, is the list of names on the wall of all the people who had passed away. And I don't know anybody in that was on that wall in their names, but I almost felt like you could reach out and touch them a little bit because they're no different than you and I. You know, they got up to go to work like you and I do every day. You know, there was a certain amount of trauma, I guess, being from New York and subsequently flying into New York and seeing the towers not there in the skyline. 13 years later, it still moves you. I mean, you know, seeing the helmets of firefighters that died, seeing the picture of the fire truck, I don't know what person in the right mind wouldn't feel some kind of emotion looking at that stuff. Like somebody lost their life saving complete strangers. This brought back some feelings that I guess I had put aside. It's very, it was very moving. I, I was impressed. I was so thrilled that the art gallery is doing that. And Muskegon, through a, a series of events which I tried to tell, had the unique opportunity to host this event in it being the first American art museum to have this exhibit. I think it's important that people hear your experiences. People who weren't there, they need to know, and I think the main way to tell it is not just to tell what happened, but to tell what it meant to you, what it did to you. remember it was a beautiful day, just a, a gorgeous day, and I, 
recall that it was a kind of day you just wanted to encapsulate. I was in a high school. I was a co-op coordinator. I was in my car, and I was driving to meet a group of lady friends. You know, I was watching Good Morning America. My daughter was going to school. We were in the family room, getting her ready for school. I got a phone call from a friend who was going to work, and he said, turn on your TV. So I was in the uh, doctor's office. I had knee surgery, knee replacement surgery earlier, and I was at, at, uh, making a, a follow-up call. And they said the World Trade Center had been hit by a plane. And we saw from the windows that, the, indeed, there was a, a, a gaping hole in the side of the uh, North Tower. Well, I remember hearing it and thinking, this can't be true. And then um, by the time I got to where our friends were gathering, the TV was on and, you know, there was evidence that it was true. Did that just happen? You know, I mean, I just it still it still plays in my mind, like, where I was and, you know, seeing that and it really took a toll you know that afternoon i mean because we're downtown i see a lot of taller skyscrapers in the greater grand rapids area thinking wow you know could something happen here you know what's you know is this obviously an act of war is there's a, you know what happened i mean there's a lot of questions i had i wanted more knowledge i wanted to know more about it what was going on and so i was glued to the tv or the radio i had to travel into grand rapids and i had the radio on all the way in we watched footage uh, for quite a while. We were just shocked and uh, just couldn't uh, believe what had happened. There was a sense of panic sort of building of among people. As we were standing there, more people came around and uh, people were commenting on it and wondering what had happened. And then suddenly we saw out of the corner of our eyes the other plane coming towards the South Tower and immediately once it hit the South Tower I remember people starting to cry, people screaming. Everyone knew that it was a planned attack. And it, it had a real similar experience of people coming out and crying and even in this small school very far away from New York, the sense of I remember panic and, and what does it mean? Why would this happen? I guess I felt very vulnerable. And I felt, um, I just really felt terrible about all those poor people that were trapped there. And then I remembered seeing bodies, people jumping and I just thought, my God, how desperate do you have to be to jump? Because I've been in the, I, I visited the Twin Towers in the 90s, and it's awesome, the height. It's, it's, you look down, and it was frightening to look down. I remember feeling so insignificant, and I remember thinking, my God, I can't believe people have actually, the alternative staying was to burn alive, and they chose to jump. And it was... I just felt really terrible for their families. Knowing how those people must have felt, that was the end of their life, and they couldn't do anything about it. They couldn't run faster to get away. They couldn't think better. They couldn't do anything. It's a tragedy of our, our time. And the fact that we were listening to the radio on the way home from the restaurant, and that's when the towers started going down. And I told my wife, I can't believe those towers would go down regardless of how they got hit, but they did. Amy was uh, a few blocks away from the World Trade Center when the plane hit. So she saw the smoke, she saw the chaos, she saw the people running through the streets. And I think, you know, she's a New Yorker through and through, and I think that's why her experiences seeing that chaos and the, and the tragedy on the day that it actually happened, I think that came through in, in her photos and her passion. Photographs are really powerful because they include the visible artifacts of our lives. And a lot of times those are faces, those are landmarks, those are things that we're familiar with. And they rearrange the things that we see every day. 
and use them to tell a story. Amy's function is to document what's happening on that site, but it was Jane Connell, our curator, who saw the quality of the photography and recognized the story that it could tell about how this site turned from chaos and tragedy to a site of national memory, national honor. So we wanted to tell that story. We express our gratitude to the construction workers who have been responsible for transforming Ground Zero, a site of chaos and incomprehensible tragedy and pain into the National Memorial and Museum today at a site that reaffirms respect for life, strengthens our resolve to preserve freedom, and inspires an end to hatred, ignorance, and intolerance. I think their memorial is wonderful. As, a, as an artist, I think that it's moving how there's a void in the middle, and it, it, that's the void, especially for people who were personally attached to someone who died that day. I give a great deal of credit to, to those individuals who sacrificed so much to rebuild and, and repair what was destroyed and damaged. It's important to understand that this exhibit is that's what it stands for. It doesn't stand for destruction, it stands for where we've come since then. Remember and rebuild is a theme that I think every community has to look to because as we evolve as a community, a town, a country, a state, whatever, we need to look back and see where we've been and what pieces and what things we have to move forward. And in case of the Museum of Arts exhibit, we also have to look at those traumatic events that have had a major impact on what it is we're trying to rebuild. So I think exhibits like uh, the Art Museum is presenting right now are incredibly powerful and incredibly important. And we know that this act of remembering is a measure of tribute in and of itself. Of those who died in Lower Manhattan on September 11, 2001, 406 were firefighters, police, and Port Authority first responders who died trying to do what many of you do every day. One of the legacies of 9-11 that is very powerful is that it shows that when in a crisis, when pressed to the wall, everyday people, and by everyday people, I mean the everyday person, not the trained expert, the PhD, the astronaut, the, you know, the specialist, but the person you see on the subway, the person you ride the bus with, the person you go to school with, have tremendous resources of compassion and ingenuity. It's important that people don't forget. It's important that I think that we all have to pull together and be good to one another. I know it was a devastating tragedy for so many people, and I think the exhibit that was here helped to remind people of what that day meant to so many others. Talking about pain and acknowledging pain doesn't create pain. The pain, the pain is there, and there's healing in being able to acknowledge the trauma, tell the story, see the story, and comfort for them. I think in seeing their parents or loved ones are not forgotten, and they're honored in a very amazing way. In the end, we begin again, we rebuild.